Committee on Parole is reconvening. We are at the East Baton Rouge Parish Prison. My name is Cheryl Renatza, serving as chairman today. Uh, we have on panel this morning, Mr. Pete Freeman to my left, Mr. Alvin Roche to my right. And uh, with the staff there at the officer at East Baton Rouge, would you introduce yourself for the record? Oh, Deputy James. I'm East sorry, sir, I didn't hear Dep you. Deputy James. Deputy James. Yes, ma'am. And um, the, the parole panel this morning, we are situated uh, at Southeastern Louisiana University, and we do have some students and faculty observing this process this morning. Uh, Mr. Cooper, is that you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right, Mr. Cooper, would you introduce yourself? Tell us your name and your DOC number. My name is Cooper, DOC number 554218. And let's see, is that Mr. Green also in the room? Yes, ma'am. Did I get y'all to trade places that we need Mr. Cooper up front? No. You can come in that box. All right, Mr. Cooper. There, that's better. Do you have a parole revocation questionnaire? Is that what's in your hand? That's right. Do you, is that the piece of paper you have in your hand? Is that a parole revocation questionnaire? No, ma'am. Do you have your parole revocation questionnaire with you? No, ma'am. All right. Do y'all, staff, do y'all have it? Can you put it up on the screen? Stand by, we're going to show it to you. All right, you recognize that form, Mr. Cooper? Yes, ma'am. Is that your signature at the bottom of that page dated July 18, 2023? Yes, ma'am. All right, based on the information you gave during that questionnaire uh, and your responses, you're not eligible for appointed counsel. So we're here for a revocation decision this morning. Uh, let me just acknowledge you have some folks uh, here in support. We have Brandy Reed uh, and R Ron Leisha Cooper, both who are observing, uh, won't be speaking on your behalf, but they are here, here in support. And located at our offices, our hearing room in Baton Rouge is your mother, Miss Mary Cooper, and she wants to speak on your behalf and we'll ask her to do so at the appropriate time. Um, first, I'll read the allegations against you. I'll ask you to enter a plea of guilty or not guilty and then we'll have a conversation about your plea. Then we'll hear from your mother and you'll be allowed to make a statement at the end before we before we uh, vote on the revocation decision. Do you understand the process? I think y'all, your microphone's on mute, is it? No. There it is, I hear you now. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so Mr. Cooper, you're accused of violating the conditions of your parole, specifically condition number three, which says, on or before January 18, 2023, you moved from your address of record without getting permission from your parole officer before doing so. It is further alleged that you failed to return to the state of Louisiana and remained in the state of Texas without permission after your travel permit expired as evidenced by your arrest by the Tarrant County Sheriff's Office. How do you plead to violating condition number three? Not guilty. Okay, and then there's condition number four. You engaged in criminal conduct when you were arrested by the Tarrant County Sheriff's Office and charged with possession of a controlled dangerous substance, robbery, assault caused bodily injury, family violence, and continuance continuous violence against family. The possession has been dismissed twice. It was initially filed and was uh, on January 23rd, 23. It was dismissed May 24th, 2023 because the lab results were not back within 90 days. Case was refiled on July 6th, 2023 and subsequently dismissed on July 21st, 2023 at the prosecutor's discretion. All other felony charges were dismissed or no bill. 
but how do you plead to violating condition number four? Not guilty as I was. Not guilty? Okay. And lastly is condition number 10. You failed to make payments toward your supervision fees for the months of January 2023 through July 2023. You're currently $388 in arrears. How do you plead to violate in condition number 10? I am guilty. Say it again. Guilty. Guilty. Okay. Uh, as mentioned, your case has been assigned to Mr. Roche. Would you answer his questions? Thank you, Madam Chairman. Mr. Cooper, good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Do you remember the exact date that you were released on good time? August 20, I mean, August the um, 13th, um, 2022. And how long after that release did you report to parole and probation? The next the next, the next, the next day. Did your parole officer go over all of your uh, conditions of your parole? Yes, um, yes, sir. And did you sign that parole certificate stating that you understood? Yes, all sir. All those conditions? Yes, sir. And condition number four stated, that you should have no criminal activity whatsoever. Yes, sir. Is that correct? Yes, sir. In condition number three stated that you must live at the residence affixed to your parole certificate if you made any changes to that address, you would have to notify your parole officer and get approval. Yes. So shortly after that, you went in and you applied for an interstate compact, which we call ICOT for short, to the state of Texas. Yes. Yes, sir. And being compassionate and merciful, your parole officer gave you a travel permit from December 12th of 2022 to January 12th, 2023. Is that correct? Yes. A 30 day pass to go to Texas. Yes, sir. Okay. That's about right, right? That's about right, yes. You went to Texas and how many times were you arrested in Texas? Um, I was arrested one time because they, I, it was a, it was a, a it was a a, a, a situation that wasn't even. Okay, well, no, I, I, I don't, I didn't ask you about the situation. I asked if you were arrested. Yes, sir. For domestic abuse, right? In the latter part, in the latter part of December, you had an incident with your girlfriend. Is that correct? In December? Yes or no? I, I don't recall that. Okay. But you were arrested? Yes, sir. I was arrested. Criminal activity. Okay, and you were you were released, and there was at least two incidents where your girlfriend called your parole officer and saying that you were physically abusing her on January sixth and January twelfth. Let's take the January twelfth, where you went to her apartment at two o'clock in the morning and asked her for money. Do you remember that? No, sir. Okay. Never have. Do you remember taking $1,100 from her wallet? No, sir, never happened. 
You remember pulling her hair and some of her braids were this, this detached from her body? No, sir. Well, I'm, I'm going to read parts of the police report closely. Is that better? Okay. That's why everything was dismissed. That, that's sir, and, sir, sir, I, I didn't say whether it was dismissed, oh, okay. prosecuted, yes, sir. refused. Yes, sir. I just said that it happened. All this information I'm reading in the arrest report didn't happen. No, sir. Okay. So when you were arrested on January 18th by the U.S. Police Department, did that happen? Yes, sir. And where were you supposed to be on January 18th? According to your travel permit, you were supposed to be back in the state of Louisiana. Because it expired on January 12th. But still in all, you were arrested on January 18th, approximately um, 5 o'clock. And when you went to the jail for intake, and you were asked to take off your sock. When you removed your sock, there was a clear bag that fell to the ground. It was collected, it was tested, and it came out as meth on your possession at intake while you were being arrested. And it tested positive permit if that happened. Mr. Cooper, did that happen? No, sir. So, so what I'm reading verbatim didn't happen. I know the DA to miss dismissed the charge, that's his prerogative. But what I'm interested in is, did that happen? I went to the, yeah, I was uh, arrested, but they didn't find no uh, methamphetamine on me. You didn't have a clear bag of crystal clear substance in your sock when you were asked to take off your socks in the intake at your police station. Oh, uh, it was it was three people. It wasn't. It was it was okay. three people in the room. Thank you, thank you, sir. And all this police report of January six and January twelfth with your girlfriend stating that you physically abused her is that true also? Now, did you have a job at the time? Yes, sir. Who were you working for? A mother. You were working for your girlfriend's parents? Yes. What, what happened after the police report? Happened after the police report, I ended up... Um, were you fired? But, yes, sir. You were fired because you abused their daughter. You were fired from where her, her from her mother um job. You were working for you were working for her parents, right? Was I working for her, was I working for her parents? Yes. Did I working the whole time? Okay, okay. Now. Your travel permit expired on January 12th. What were you doing in Texas when you were arrested on January 18th at five o'clock in the afternoon? 
be truthful. Um, I thought I came back and got another pass after um, after um, the after the one that had um, I think it had it's fine. I think I came back or it was I was waiting on the um, interstate compact. I thought Mr. with the Mr. interstate. Mr. Cooper, the interstate compact was refused twice. That's and I never nobody never told me. I never got any. But uh, you were back in Louisiana on January twelfth, according to your travel permit. January twelfth. January twelfth. You and I have a copy of the permit. It says December twelfth, twenty twenty two, to January twelfth. 2023, and you were arrested on January 18th. If you were doing exactly as you were supposed to do, you wouldn't have been in Texas to be arrested. Yes, sir. Madam Chairman. Mr. Roche. Mr. Cooper, um, when you, you, you were talking about the permit and you said there was an interstate compact pending, did I hear you correctly? Yes. yes An application at least. So when was the last time you called and inquired about the status of the interstate compact? Um, it was around, it was like February or sometime, I think. What were you told? That it was still, it was still, nobody never told me that it was denied. What were you told? It was, it was still like it was still pending. It take it three to six months. Right. And were you told that at that time that your travel permit was expired and you needed to return to Louisiana? No, ma'am. Are you aware that there are still pending charges against you in Texas? Uh, assault causes bodily injury and family vi family violence. No, ma'am. I did. Those are still pending charges. I'm not asking you a question. I'm just making you aware of that. Oh, okay. um, <clears throat> at this time, we'd like to uh, hear from your mother, Miss Mary Cooper. Miss Cooper, what do you want us to know about Moses? Hello, how are you doing? Good morning. Good oh, mother. You know, I've been riding with my son for 16 years. And, you know, he promised this girl that he was going to be with her and, you know, do right. Because I told him, you know, that I would see that she was going to be good for him. You know, any mother know. But he wanted to stick with his word and try to be there. But she was, she was, she was a devil. He couldn't go nowhere. She picks the fight, and then she's so smart, though. She picked the fight. Then she'll be called or say she's going to call, you know, threaten him. And, you know, and I told him, tell him time after time, I said, son, let's leave her alone and come home. Yes, ma'am, Ms. Cooper, thanks for uh, thanks for sharing that information with us. We appreciate you uh, being there today. Thank you. All right, Mr. Moses, is there anything you'd like to say to us? Everything that's going on with with this, with my parole, this is my first, I did 12 years. I came out into the world expecting some different and when the, the the reality of life hit me, I really was like, you know, I all the stuff that's that was going on, as in trying to stay focused with trying to stay out and stay um um within the guidelines of my 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 situation is I had this this person really always threatening me, saying, "Oh, you, I'm, if you ain't." With me, you're gonna be back in jail. Is all it was always it was always games, and so the situation was by me working for her parents. They they felt like 
okay, if you don't be with my daughter, you're going to back to jail. We're going to make sure you go back to jail. That type of stuff right there. And so all this stuff right here, this stuff was just put on me in, in order to try to get me back into a, a jail, a prison uh, situation. I was trying to change and be a, a good person out there and, and stay free. But, you know, this, this type of stuff came about. And being out there in Texas, my I was never informed that this was um, – that my uh, interstate compact was denied. And I'm thinking I'm waiting on the people to um, contact me for a new parole officer um, out there in Texas. Everything that's going on with my, um, with these, the charges and my parole, uh, me being out there, I came back. I was trying to do the right thing. I came back. That's why I um, applied for an interstate compact. I wasn't just trying to leave out there. I was trying to do go about things the right way, but you know, I, 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 I find myself in this situation. All right. I think we are prepared to vote, Mr. Cooper. Mr. Roche will be voting first. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, Mr. Cooper, I've yes, heard sir. you this morning. I've yes, heard sir. you, but even though. The majority of charges have been dismissed. The, the burden of proof is much less on the committee on parole than it is on the DA. I find that there were criminal activity, drugs, at the time you were arrested. The first report shows that. There was illegal uh, domestic abuse on your part. Therefore, I find you guilty of violating conditions number three, absconding supervision, condition number four, criminal activity, condition number 10, being in a risk on your supervision team. Therefore, I am revoking your parole supervision. You have a good day. Mr. Freeman. Um, I concur with Mr. Roche. I think you were very less than honest. My vote is also to revoke for the same reason. Mr. Cooper, um, my vote also is to revoke Miss, based on, uh, I find you guilty of violating the conditions of your parole. You will have the opportunity, sir, to get your act together, get you a transition plan together. You'll be able to reapply for a parole hearing. We will advise you when you're eligible to do so. Today, your parole has been revoked. Okay. It was, it was, You know, I have to, I have to admit that when his mother got up and started to cry and it looked to me like he started to cry, I, I did feel bad for him. Uh, I don't know what his original sentence was. I couldn't, I couldn't find the information and he just served a lot of time and, but it, and I don't know how much time he's backing. But then again, it's like you kind of get snapped back into reality when you realize that he really had just one of the one of the worst revocation hearings or any hearing I think that we've seen. Not, it's hard to say one of the worst, but it was bad. I, you don't lie to the board, and he lied over and over and over again. You should say you don't lie to the board. You definitely don't lie to Mr. O'Shea. He. He reads everything. This was an interesting hearing, this interesting format. They're doing it in in the university. There are students and staff watching. I don't I wonder how many students. Um, Kay June survivor told me that she attended one of these a few years ago. Uh, so it's something that they do every few years. And it was interesting because I didn't feel like the board 
put on a show that they were in person or kind of Mr. Natsa was her old self, same as Mr. Freeman. I thought that Mr. O'Shea was maybe adding a little bit of um, verbiage as, as an explanation. For example, when he said the district attorney uh, has more of a burden than the parole board. So, you know, that I, I think that was something he was explaining to the to the students and the faculty that, I mean, well, I guess the students, he, you know, he, they, the DA dropped the charges, but they didn't need to. You know, they, they can look at information and just say, well, they make a judgment call. I mean, this stuff came out of his sock. And he said, well, I wasn't charged, so he thought he could lie about it. And in these situations, he doesn't, you know, the best bet always is to just be honest, I would think. There are some cases where I feel like people aren't honest. They stick to the guns and the parole board lets them off. It's interesting. But he had one thing after another. And whatever the situation was with his with his girlfriend, it, it's he had everything else stacked up against him. If it was only his girlfriend, they, they probably would have had leniency. But um, it was everything else added up together. It was, uh, it's sad to me. It's just, it just seems sad. It really is, but what, what choice does, do they have? Again, don't know how much time he's backing, but if he, when he has his next parole hearing, we'll cover it. And what do you think of the format? I like the, the, the microphones that they have, you know, the visuals are not great. I prefer the, but the microphones, it's like, wow, that's what a quality, that's what their voices sound like. Interesting. If only they can, if only they can borrow those microphones and put it in, uh, into their office. And also I wonder how many, I wonder how many, uh, students have been watching these parole hearings before seeing it in person it, it, it's kind of doesn't i don't understand why do you need to do it in person like maybe there's a q a after that they engage with the board or something that we're not seeing but it's like you can go on youtube so why why bother with all of the the theatrics here but yeah i wonder i wonder how many watching have seen mandu <laughs> if you have, I salute you. But with that, I'll let you go.